Hey there, it's Kat and this is Brews and Reviews. So, it happened. I... I... I don't... Like, I don't even know what to say. Um, so I reached a thousand subscribers and it's kind of blown my mind a little bit. My, it's boggled boggled the whole little brain cells that exist in in my brain. Um, <laughs> I am so 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 bad at talking about things that make me really happy and like positive emotions and things like that and things that sort of affect me in a sort of happiness kind of way. <laughs> I'm like terrible at talking about it but um, thank you. I <laughs> I just can't like believe it. I'm I'm kind of still in shock even though this technically happened about a week ago now. And I you know, well, I just can't. <laughs> I promise I'm going to be able to talk a bit more later. I just really don't even know what to say. I'm just so thankful. I mean, you guys are awesome and like the fact that like even one person wants to watch me kind of blows my mind so the fact that there are a thousand people out there that are subscribed to me like <laughs> I don't know wh why why are you wasting your time with me <laughs> um, I don't know um yeah I, I really appreciate you guys and thank you so much okay so now we've had uh, super awkward cat time it's time for the answers to the Q&A that I promised you guys. I'll be picking the giveaway winner at the end of the video, so if you just want to know that, then you probably want to skip to the end of this video, but you know, if you actually want to know the answers to some of these questions that I've been asked, then stick around for this bit. So I'm just going to read the questions that you guys gave me off of my phone, and I'm going to go from what the, my phone has dictated is the bottom of the comments, so this is just going to be in like a whatever order that is. Okay? <laughs> I'm so nervous. But first, actually, though, I do need to say that I told you guys how nervous I was about doing a QA and a and because I am, I am super nervous about this. This is weird talking about myself. I just, I, the same, the same awkward from the beginning of this video is permeating this part of the video, but hopefully I can answer some questions. Um, but you guys really came through and actually asked me questions and I'm so grateful because like, I'm so awkward, I don't know. It's so, it's so weird. I'm just really grateful you guys actually asked me questions. So let's get on with it. So Stax on Stax on Stax asked, have you ever regretted reading a book? If so, what book? And then she put in brackets, Plague Pit. Now Plague Pit is a book that I read that was the first Complaints with Cat book. And honestly, I don't regret reading that one. I, because it, it was so bad that there were bits about it that were kind of hilariously funny. And I'm like, I got something out of that, I got like a humorous thing and I managed to make a video out of that as well so I feel like that wasn't a total loss. Now if if I'm being super critical of the books that I've read recently I want to say Fight Club is a book that I wish that I'd never read because like I kind of wish I'd just watched the movie because now I don't even want to watch the movie because the book was just so rubbish I didn't get anything out of it I just didn't want to read it and I thought they were all trash people so maybe that one. The second question is, if you could have tea with each of the following, who would you choose? An author living, an author dead, and a fictional character? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, okay, so really I have two of the choices immediately. An author dead, David Gemmell, my favourite author ever. He is amazing, and I would kill to meet him because I, I didn't actually get into reading his books until after he passed away. But I would love to have tea with him, and also trust the legend, who is my favourite character of all time. Because, I mean, I don't know how he would be at tea, but he's like such a nice man. And he's like a bit of a grumpy old guy. And even though he's a badass and would kill people, and lots of, he's killed lots of people. But he also is just like really sweet and he has like a sort of grandfatherly, fatherly tone. And I just love him. So I would love to have tea with him. Now an author living, I feel like, I feel like I'd really like to to put Pierce Brown in there as well because there are so many authors that I love, so many authors, um, and I would love to meet them all, even though that would be weird because I'd be super awkward with them, but I feel like Pierce Brown and David Gemmell having a chat about like worlds and things like that, I just would really enjoy that. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just I'll just sit with Druss and uh, enjoy that tea. <laughs> and our last question is, what advice would you give to 15 year old Kat? Or, 
well, 15-year-old cat was more of a bitch than 27-year-old cat is, so don't be a bitch. Also, you will find out why you're like that. I, I don't know, I don't really remember 15-year-old me. I was awkward then and I'm awkward now and um, yeah, I guess <laughs> I, I had my problems, but now I know why I had those problems, so I guess you'll find out and it's okay. That sounded really weird, but like, yeah, that's probably all I would tell myself. Okay, so this isn't a question that is relating to my Q&A, but Vicky30312 said, This was so nice and relaxing until you gave me a minor heart attack from walking right along the water. Clearly you were good, but why? Now, so, <laughs> stupid me, right, forgets that people don't necessarily know that I grew up around canals and, um, because my grandparents has a canal boat, and, um, so I'm super confident around canals and around locks and different things like that. Um, so even though I'm a fuckwit and, like, I fall over on, like, regular ground, I'm super confident when it comes to the canal, so I promise I was in no danger of falling in the canal, even though I am clumsy and do fall over a lot. The mystery date with the book asked, if you were to start another YouTube channel, what would it be about? And what would you call it? Oh my god, like, I don't know, my only passion is books. That's not necessarily true, but I don't think I'm that interesting, really. Um, I have, like, a super passion for books. Um, maybe, like, bullet journaling, but I'm not really that creative in that sense. I'm not really, like, super great at my other hobbies, so I hoop dance, but I'm not anything special. I, I make the occasional Instagram tiny little video, but I just keep repeating the same moves over and over again, so, you know. Mm. And I haven't done kickboxing for ages. I go to caveman, but I'm also really rubbish at that, because, like, I'm a weakling. I don't think I'd really have anything to say if I had a different YouTube channel, and also a name for it. I It took me fucking ages to come up with this name, and that's only because I really like coffee, and I was like, it's a brew! Question number two, what's your favourite snack? I'm kind of terrible for snacks, because I have no impulse control, so if I start snacking, then I'm gonna keep snacking and I'll basically just eat it for dinner. So I really love crisps, just in general. I seem to have two settings. It's either crisps or chocolate. So if I'm gonna pick my favourite crisps, at the moment I'm really, really enjoying pop chips, which I don't know if they're technically crisps, but I'm calling them crisps. Or like Doritos. I could go through a whole bag of Doritos. This is how I got really fat at uni, because I just eat Doritos and croissants. Beside the point. Oh no, I have three settings. Ice cream is a setting too. I fucking love ice cream. I could just eat ice cream all day. And any type of chocolate, really, I will eat that. If I had to pick a favourite ice cream, it would be Baskin Robbins Tiramisu ice cream, and I can never find that at the cinema, and it still plagues me. Every single time I go in there, I just look at the ice cream and I'm like, is it there? Is it there? It's never there. And lastly, she asks, who are your top three authors? So David Gemmell, obviously. Oh my god, this is just so hard. This is the just so hard. Um, uh, can I pick three? Okay, so I just had a little discussion with myself where I was like talking out loud about the authors. So obviously David Gemmell because he is the number one in in my opinion. I'm gonna pick Jay Kristoff and Pierce Brown. There was a whole big thing in my head about Lee Bardugo, Melissa Marr, Marissa Meyer. However, while there are series that they have written that are among my favourites, there are other books that I've liked less that they've written and I feel like it just sort of pushes it down, whereas I'm like, everything that I've read by Pierce Brown and everything that I've read by Jay Kristoff, I'm like, yes! So I feel like that's that's kind of what clinched them at the top, the top there. Kylie Falconer asks, what book have you read because of booktube that you thought you might dislike but you were pleasantly surprised by? For this one I'm gonna go with The Raven Boys, and this is weird because I actually didn't like it the first time I read it, well I, I thought it was okay, and then the second time I've just read it I was like, oh my god this is amazing. Now the sort of magical realism contemporary sort of thing isn't usually my thing. I tend to prefer things that are more like urban fantasy rather than magical realism, um, but Oh yeah, I just, I just really enjoy it. Yeah, I, I didn't think I was gonna actually get through the Raven Boys, even though everyone says that they're fantastic and then uh, now I know why! I get it, I get it, I know why. So that, yeah, the Raven Boys. The Novelty Corner asks, what is a book or what are some books that you feel like everyone should read? Um, obviously I'm always gonna say any of David Gemmell's books because I love them all and they're all fantastic and I think more people should read David Gemmell, obviously. 
I do think it depends on what sort of thing that you're into. Like, if you like fantasy, obviously David Gamble. If you like sci-fi, then I think you should read Red Rising. I think you should read Illuminae. I think you should read The Book of M. And I think you should read The Unit. So, yep, there's some of those. If you like crime thrillers, then I think you should read Sweet Pea. And I think you should read Sleep. For horror, I think you should read Cujo and Nosferatu. And, um, yep, those, I guess, are some books. I've probably forgotten some books. So, there's just... A lot of books that I think people should read if you're into different genres or if you want to try out some genres. I really liked all of them. Do you have a reading routine or an ideal reading routine? Okay, so my reading routines kind of change with what I'm actually doing. So if it was a normal working day, then what I would do is read for about half an hour in my car before I go into work and then listen to my audiobook while I'm at work. And then I'll come home and read a physical book at some point in the night. Probably. Maybe. I guess. If we're talking my lockdown routine, then I haven't really been listening to audiobooks that much, unless I've been going on like really long walks where I've been able to listen to it. Um, and I've been reading physical books on my lunch. I'm reading a lot more physical books in the evening after I've come home from like my social distance walk, so that's that routine. My weekend reading routine is just read when you want to usually before I've got dressed and usually after I've got dressed I just read a lot all of the time so <laughs> there is no routine when it comes to reading because it's just a thing that I want to do all of the time so I'll just fit it in whenever I can. What's something you'd like everyone to know about you? Okay so <laughs> this is super awkward, I'm super awkward, this is one of the things that I would like you guys to know about me. Um, so I suffer from anxiety, I told you guys that before and this is just a general anxious being that I am. Um, the thing that I would like you to know is that I would really love to do shout out videos and I would really love to talk about all the creators I watch and the creators that I'm really enjoying watching and loving their videos but like I'm afraid. My There's something in my head that's like don't do it. You will offend somebody and I mean how do you even offend someone when you're literally making a video saying how great they are but like, my little anxious brain is like, don't do it, no, 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 you'll say something, you'll offend them, they will hate you, and then you'll just look like an idiot, and, and it's not necessarily that I'm worried about looking like an idiot, it's that I'm worried that I will damage the sort of friendship that I have with people and things like that, and I, like, how do you even do that when you say positive things, but I go in this little cycle in my brain, and it stresses me out to the extent that, like, I, I can't even go near the camera like, I, I can't, I try and write things down to try and, like, pre-film it, and it's like, nope, can't do it. So, <laughs> the thing that I actually want to tell you guys is that I would really, really love to do shout-out videos, and there are so many creators out there that I would really love to, um, to say, it's just, I just don't know how to say it in a way that my brain will not, sort of, explode at the thought of filming this video, so, <laughs> I know that's really stupid, but, like, I just kind of wanted to explain why I don't really do shout out videos and like it's, it's because I just find it so hard so um yeah that's dumb but that's a thing that I want you guys to know about my weird little brain. And Novelty Corner's last question is if you could pick two to three characters to read more stories about who would they be? Oh well okay Dress the Legend obviously I'm just just default answer Dress the Legend even though there's like seven, nine books with him in, I'm like, yes, please more dress, please, please. <laughs> Let's face it, I'd read more about the Darkling from the Grisha trilogy, and I would read more about Aiden from the Illuminae Files, because I just fucking love <laughs> Just all of those characters, please, give me more, give me more. Redhead Reading asks, are there any books with amazing premises that have disappointed you that you wish could be redone? Or the opposite, books you went in with low expectations but blew you away? Now the interesting thing about this is that I don't really like to read the backs of books, I don't really like to know too much about books. If I could go into a book knowing like the tiniest little snippet of something that somebody has said about it that's good, then I will read that book. Um, I often tend to find that if there's a lot of hype around something then I tend not to enjoy it. Like I went into uh, Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare with high expectations and that did not work out for me. I think this also happened with Renegades by Marissa Meyer because obviously I love the Lunar Chronicles, they were a fantastic series, but there was something about Renegades that I just didn't connect with me and I felt like I was disappointed by that. Um, but maybe I wouldn't have been, people hadn't sort of hyped it up and I hadn't had that sort of expectation. 
And I think that tends to get to me more than anything. So I've just gone down the route where I just like to know as little as possible as I can about a book. So Connor Booktube asked, what video was the most fun to make? And I feel like my acting ones are always the most fun to make. I mean, they're a ball ache because I have to end up dressing up as like a bunch of different characters and then sort of scripting it and then filming like different angles of different things. Um, so, you know, it's not ideal from like a filming perspective, but I find that they're the most fun to sort of watch back and be like, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was a, that was a fun thing that I did. But also it was kind of fun to sort of put myself in all of the different characters, like running around the house dressed as Snape was pretty fun, even though that was like the worst costume ever. Also, I got to go out into the garden dressed as Harry Potter and pretend I was wearing an invisibility cloak. So that was fun for my neighbours. Basically, I think dressing up is the most fun for me. The videos that are least fun to make are the ones where I put a lot of pressure on myself to deliver something and it's usually because I'm doing something with other people and I don't want to let them down. So what Victoria Red asks, which video are you most proud of? And I feel like, again, I'm gonna say like my acting ones because I know they're bad acting. Like we all know that I'm terrible at acting. I feel like my favourite one might be Stalkers Anonymous where I dressed up as a bunch of like fictional stalkers and put them in like a self-help meeting um, because I just thought that was really funny. I'm also really happy with the uh, speed dating fictional book characters video that I did because that was, that was dumb. So Novel Novels asks what is your favourite animal both magical or actual? Okay, so my favourite, like, real animal is just cats in general. I love cats, uh, specifically if I had to pick, and obviously I'm not picking my own cat, who I love, who is not here right now, or I'm sure I would hold him up like Simba from The Lion King. Um, <laughs> I love tigers as well, like, they're awesome. Um, I just really like animals in general, like all animals, um, except for spiders, but like... And I feel like that kind of transcends into the magical world. Like, if I was dark and in the Nevernight trilogy then, you know, have a Mr. Kindly. That would be so cool! Or like Eclipse, like wolves. I love wolves as well. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like wolves. I really like tigers. I really like cats. So just like magical versions of them. <laughs> but also who wouldn't have a dragon? If you could have a dragon, would you, you have a dragon? I'd have a dragon. That would be so cool. A Beautiful Chaos of Books also asks what your favourites and least favourite videos are to film. So I've already answered that one so I won't answer it again. Shonarella asks, how is Hannah and do you still see each other? Um, I don't know, we don't actually see each other. Our lives sort of went in different directions so we don't, we don't really see each other anymore. She also asks, what is your favourite horror novel? And I'm gonna go with Nosferatu by Joe Hill. I keep talking about that one a lot. I haven't really read that many horror novels and I feel like um, that's a really good one because it, it just felt dirty and creepy and the atmosphere was really great and it had a sort of child abduction theme which I feel like is really creepy and horrible really so yeah I really like that book. Definitely just had a little coffee break there because my coffee was going cold because I've been talking for ages. Darkest Wings Reads asks this has probably been asked, but what's your all-time favourite book? That book that you could reread over and over and still enjoy. And I mean, it hasn't been asked, but I have already said it because I will give this opinion regardless whether anyone's asking for it. It is Legend by David Gemmell. I can read that book. I, I could read it and then put it down and then pick it straight back up again and then read it and then put it down and then pick it up straight back up again. It is just so good. So good. I love it so much. I feel like David Gemmell has a way of writing that is so visual and I can just, I can picture it in my head right now. I can sit here and I'm like, I can see the walls of the fortress. I can see Druss coming in. I can feel his first arrival when everyone is so desperate and that they see him coming and they're like, Druss, Druss. And I'm like, yes, please, yes. Cause it's just so good. It's like making me emotional. Cause like this book just, is just so good and I love it a lot and um, yeah so it's it's Legend by David Gemmell. Laurie McIntyre asks what is your least favourite household chore? Oh god all of them I hate chores <laughs> I'm so bad at chores um okay uh, I don't know cleaning I am bad at cleaning I'm not bad at it but like I struggle to sort of force myself to have the energy to do all of my chores I even write them in my bullet journal so that I'm like I actually need to do that. I'm bad at gardening. Is that? I guess that's not a household chore because it's outside. But like, I'm bad at gardening. I don't know if my plants are dead or not. Are they dead? I don't know. Are they just like waiting to bloom? 
I don't know. Um, I hate uh, cleaning the bathroom. That sucks because it's, it's all the bleach everywhere and you're just like... I hate it. I hate hoovering, but not because like hoovering's hard, but because I have so much hair, I molt all over the place, and I constantly have to go around picking up all like the hair spiders. We call them calf spiders in my family's house because my god, that's what they look like. So the reason I hate hoovering is because like all my hair gets caught in my hoover and I have to like go at it with scissors before the damn thing will work again, so it takes like twice as long as a normal person would when they were hoovering. Like it's a good job I don't have a massive house because it would take me like hours to hoover. Anyway, sorry, I just went on a like, rant about household chores, <laughs> Yeah. She also asked, what book do you think everyone should read to make the world a better place? I don't know, because I feel like there are so many books that people should read to make their perspectives more round. I don't think there is any one book that people could read and it would make the world a better place. I feel like people should just read more roundly. I think people should read books by and featuring people of colour, people in the LGBTQIA plus community, all genders, nationalities. I think we should read translated works. I think it's important to read modern things and old things. I don't know. I just feel like reading roundly would make the world a better place. So Addie Gets Lost asked, how do you take your coffee? All right, so this is where a lot of people who have coffee are gonna be like, you don't even drink coffee properly, but like, this is how I drink coffee. I have instant coffee. I have Nescafe Gold. I have one teaspoon of that goes right in my cup and I have one teaspoon of sugar that goes in my cup. Then I pour the water in so that it goes up to about here and then I fill to about here with milk um, and then just stir it all up and that's how I have my coffee. Because I feel like that's like the perfect blend of like sweetness and bitterness for me and yeah. I just tend to call it a builder's coffee to be honest with you because it's like simple and what you'd make your builder on the construction site of your house. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's why I call it anyway. He also asks, what's the biggest coffee sin in your opinion? Um, oh, so like, if we're talking about the way that I make coffee, then it's either not putting enough milk in or not putting enough sugar in. Like, because if you put too much water in and then you don't put enough milk in, then it's not the right consistency. And that tastes gross because you're just like drinking hot water. I've never been one of those people that likes to drink like flavoured teas or things like that because the consistency is wrong without the milk. Like I have a very strange palate, it's really weird. Um, like a lot of my habits are to do with texture, so like the consistency of a drink really makes a difference to me. And if it doesn't have enough sugar, then why am I drinking it? Because it doesn't taste nice. <laughs> I feel like everyone has their own specific way of making coffee, but like that's that's just just mine. The so Cats and Camera asks, "What's your favorite movie adaptation of a book?" And I'm gonna I'm gonna say Lord of the Rings because I feel like I enjoy the Lord of the Rings more than I enjoy the book Lord of the Rings. Now, bear in mind, I did read the book Lord of the Rings when I was eleven, so that's quite a long time ago now, so uh, like 16 years ago. I feel like I should probably read that again. Um, so as an adaptation, I can't necessarily speak for how well that was done, but I can speak for what the Lord of the Rings films did for making me want to read and making me sort of get involved in fantasy world. I had an obsession with Lord of the Rings when I was younger. Uh, I saw The Fellowship of the Rings seven and a half times in the cinema, and I, there was a power cut in one of the times, right? As like, Arwen and Frodo were riding away from the Nazgul and I was like, it's dark, why is it dark? It was so weird. Um, but yeah, my parents had to sit through that all the times that I watched it. Also made my brother watch it at the age of two. I was not a good babysitter. I should not have children. Oh yeah, Lord of the Rings, I can still watch all of those films and fucking adore them because they're so fabulous. So yeah, that's my answer for that question. If I was to form it as a question, would you show a clip right now of Cooper being fluffy and wonderful? Well, I would, but he's not here. So as soon as he comes back in, I will get a picture or video of him doing something fluffy and wonderful because it's sunny outside today, so he has decided to desert me in favour of the warmth and the outside, like, pfft, honestly. Why are you being so cute? Coops. Love you. 
The next question is, if you could only keep books of one colour on your shelf, which colour would you pick? Oh god, that's cruel! That is so cruel! I don't know. Like, fully one colour, or like, just have that colour on it, because... Oh god, that's so mean! Why would you ask that? I feel like... That's so hard. Because, uh, uh, like, black is the easy answer there, because, like, most books have black on them. But if you like full colour, then I feel like I could still go for black because I could buy a book in hardback and then I get to keep it because naked hardbacks are usually black and I could buy all the books that I needed to again. I mean, uh, it's just going to get expensive, but, like, I could buy Legend in hardback form with, like, a black cover. So I feel like that's my sensible way around that even though it would cost me shit tons of money. Like, if I... Uh, yeah... Well, Why are you asking such hard questions? That's so difficult! <laughs> Do you straighten the front of your hair, or curl the back of it, or is it magic? Well, <laughs> I straighten the front, yeah. So, um, the, the thing that I do with my hair is that I will wash it, and then I will plait it, I'll put it into two plaits overnight, and I'll leave the fringe bit out. So, the fringe does not have a nice natural curl like the rest of it does. Like, this is a natural curl um, from that results from it being in plaits. My normal curl is a little bit more like Hermione's hair in the first Harry Potter film. Or, you know, Hagrid's hair. That's probably a better better example of that. Um, it's not a good look. Uh, so I plait it. And then that's what happens with that. But the front has been left to go on its merry way to dry naturally. And it always has like this really weird bit where like it curls around like this and then like it goes like that. So there's like a weird little dent that that goes, I don't know, it just happens on both sides and then it's like and it fuzzes out at the bottom. So I straighten it because it looks weird if I put it in with the plaits and I don't like wandering around for a day with like curtain face, which is what, what I, that's what that looks like. So I straighten it because it's the easiest thing to do and that's it, done. I wish it were magic though. I wish I could magically change my hair, that would be so cool. What's your favourite movie genre? Oh that's really hard because I feel like my movie genres are often based on mood. I'm very much like a mood watcher as well as I am like a mood reader. I love a really good like epic fantasy or like fantasy sort of thing but I often find they're really disappointing when you're like oh I could read a good fantasy and you know you're gonna get like something pretty good where if you like go into watching a fantasy film then you're like, am I going to get something painfully average and badly adapted? Probably. I like action films, I like some romance films, I like rom-coms because basic bitch over here, and I like horror films but not all horror films, like there are some horror films that I really like, um, I don't really like paranormal horror films because they scare the shit out of me and I live alone and any sort of creaky noise in my house will shit me up forever. Even though I once dressed as Samara from The Ring, I will never ever watch that film. I actually have no idea what my favourite genre is. I feel like it's when I like read books, I, I read so randomly and I watch films so randomly. If it's interesting, I'll watch it. So Michelle Loves Books asks, what do you do for a living? So I can't actually talk too much about my job because data protection and blah blah blah. Um, so I work in publishing and I work for a very large worldwide company and I am responsible for coordinating site content and editing site content, making sure that everything goes up on time and is legally compliant and all of that jazz. The closest thing I can link it to is like sub-editing with additional data skills and editing. <sighs> it's really, it's just such a strange job to try and explain. Do you have a partner you share your life with? Maybe. <laughs> That's so awkward, sorry. <laughs> What's a non-bookish thing that you love to do? Uh, hula hooping. I love to hoop dance. I am not great at it, but I love doing it. And I often find that if I can put some music on, and I like to record myself doing it so that I can see what I'm doing, because I often find that you sort of improve your flow a little bit if you can actually see what you're doing because I'm not a natural dancer and I do hit myself in the face a lot uh, but I do love doing it and um, yep that is that's a non-bookish thing that I love to do I would say that I love to do um, caveman but I don't because it's it's not it's not fun 
I also really like board games, but I don't really have the time to do it because my brain capacity can't handle putting the time aside for it a lot of the time. But I do really like to play board games. Any TV or movies you totally fangirl over? So many. So many. I have had like obsessions with so many films and so many TV shows. Okay, so um, anything with Mads Mikkelsen in, so I fucking love Hannibal, the TV show, even though I've not finished the third season because I still can't bring myself to do it because it was kind of weird. Uh, but the first two seasons of Hannibal, I'm like, yes. Okay, so I went through a long period of time where I didn't watch any films. However, I will say that I was obsessed with any Thor film that had Loki in, yes, including Thor 2, that everyone else hated, and I was like, Loki! <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I loved King Arthur, the 2004 King Arthur. That film is not a good film, but I loved it because I loved the knights and I thought they were awesome, so... Like, you can't change my mind. It's ingrained into my soul. Another film that I fucking love is Labyrinth, the 1986 film. I can watch that film over and over and over again and I will always love it because it's fantastic and yeah change my mind you can't you can't <laughs> I feel like I'm like forgetting a really great series and I don't know what it is that I am forgetting I'm sure there's I'm sure there's more series that I really really love not coming to me other than books do you have any collections uh yeah <laughs> I collect mugs. Yeah, I just really like to have mugs that are associated with other things that I love. So a lot of my mugs are bookish mugs. I have like a Darkling mug, I have a Severo mug from Red Rising, I have some Labyrinth mugs, I have King Arthur mugs, I have a Henry V mug, I have mugs that were given to me by special people and mugs that I have um, sort of absconded with um, from other people's houses. By that I don't mean that I have stolen them, I just mean like my grandparents moved out of their house and they were downsizing and I took one of their mugs because I was like this is my grandparents mug and I can keep that and then that's like a nice little special special thing. Um, so I have mugs that remind me of people especially if like uh, they don't really come around to my house very often and they drink from that I'm like oh that's so and so's mug, oh that's you know I d it's really weird. In my head I associate mugs with people and things and I really like them and I feel like I have a cup of coffee at least once every single day and it's just nice to sort of mix it up and have I don't think I collect anything else. I'm more of just a hoarder. Really bad at getting rid of stuff. When you hang out with IRL friends, what do you do? Um, so a board game, I do board games occasionally, uh, I go to caveman exercise class, we also go to the cinema a lot, like it's like an after work thing because there's a cinema really close to work, and we host shit film nights where we find a really really shit film and we watch it because it's really fun to take the piss out of, really fun. At the moment all we do is Netflix party, because what else is there to do? Mallory G asks, what's an unpopular book opinion that you have? I feel like a lot of my opinions are unpopular. Okay, here's two. Cassandra Clare's books are not as good as everyone says that they are, and neither is Six of Crows. Please don't hate me everyone. Perhaps that is just in my own opinion, but that is my opinion. But also saying that I love Lee Bardugo and there are good things about that book but like I, it just didn't hit me in the same way that I thought it was going to and I think that was because everyone had hyped it up so much that like it was never gonna hit like the hype it had reached. Literature Science Alliance asks what's your favourite TV show? Probably the first two seasons of Hannibal is so good. I also really love RuPaul's Drag Race and like I know it's a reality TV show and I know it's heavily heavily orchestrated by the producers but also just really like to see all of the creative things that the queens come up with and I just it's, it's so good to just watch and just enjoy and be like yes I love it also stacks on stacks and stacks she's come back again and said who would you choose to be quarantined with choose a book character tv show character and a movie character I whoever it is better be made out of steel because I wouldn't want to live with me I am not a hospitable person I I not an easy person to live with at all. Who could put up with me? Who could put up with me? Hmm. And who could I put up with? This is the question. So, because I don't actually want to live with anyone and I would be like the worst to live with, I'm going to pick people that could teach me things. So from a book character perspective I'm going to take Ariel from Wicked Lovely because um, as a 
he could kill me if I got too annoying, and he's a dark face, so that's pretty cool. I feel like some, some cool things could be happening there. He is kind of intelligent and a little bit fucked up, so that, that's fun. I guess I could live with Sun from Sense8 because she's kick-ass and I would like her to train me to be awesome at fighting. That would be fun. But now a movie character. You know, maybe Eowyn because then she could teach me how to fight with a sword. I don't know. This would be a weird, a weird interesting time. Hmm. I shouldn't be quarantined with anyone. They would all kill me. Like, I would be so annoying that they would kill me straight away. Penelope the Paperback Cat asks, what's the first book you remember reading? Okay, right, so book book, I'm gonna go with The Weird Stone of Brisingerman by Alan Garner because it's set reasonably near where I live and so little me thought that that was fucking fantastic and I was like, oh my god, we can go there! And then I did go there and it's like one of my favourite places. It's mostly set in Alderley Edge Forest and it's kind of like magical about these two kids that like go into the forest and then there's like a wizard who's asleep and it's just really cool, I really liked it. I, this is like a really good middle grade. And I really liked that book, especially because of how close to home it was. Uh, but if we're talking like when I was really young, because I read a lot when I was a child, um, I remember there were these there are two books that I remember from when I was a child, but I do not remember what one of them's called. So the one I don't remember what it's called is like, who's that knocking at our door? Like, and it's about these kids that are left at home and then someone's looking at the door and they can see through like the shadow in the door and they're like, is it a monster coming to eat us? And it's like, no, it's Aunt Jam with her golf clubs. And it's like shadow jokes and I don't know. It, it, I just remember it. I remember really liking that one. And the other one I remember is Gumboot's Chocolatey Day. And um, it was about a pig called Gumboot who went to the park and he had a chocolate bar and he kept giving bits of his chocolate bar away and then he was throwing bread to the ducks and then he throws his chocolate in the pond and he's so sad because the duck doesn't want the chocolate. The chocolate just sank and he didn't get any chocolate because he gave it all away. Spoilers, it ends happily because the duck saves his chocolate and it did taste a little bit pondy but he still got to eat it. Okay, so I just told you the entire story I read when I was a child, which is a bit weird, but like, that was such a good book when I was young. Crack Into A Good Book asks, what's your favourite type of music? I, I don't know, I feel like I listen to a lot of different types of music. I think it depends, again, what mood I'm in. I listen to a lot of noughties Kerrang type music. <laughs> like, like Linkin Park, System of a Down, things like that, and I like blast them in my ears. My favourite of those to listen to is A Perfect Circle. Um, I, I just find that I can really lose myself in their music. I also listen to film soundtracks, I listen to occasional dancey pop type things, which is a bit weird, but they're fun to hoop to, so anything with like a, a good beat and rhythm is nice. And also currently I am listening to Six the Musical because I can't get it out of my head because it's so good. And I just listen to a lot of random things. Favourite movies? I feel like I've already answered that one, so I'm not gonna answer it again. Favourite Pokemon? Oh my god, that is so hard. Um, well, I really like Gyarados because it's really cool and, you know, it's Gyarados. Um, I also really like Bulbasaur. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know why. I do not like Venusaur because Venusaur... Venusaur's a bit high. It looks like it's high, so... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I feel like Bulbasaur was super cute and then... Then they, then they turned him into Venusaur. What other hobbies do you have? I feel like I've answered that one. I'm not that interesting a person. I hoop. I caveman. I used to kick box. Yeah. Confuzzled Bev asked, what was your favourite childhood book or the first book you remember loving? From the Gumboot rant that I had just before, I'm gonna guess it was Gumboot that was my favourite childhood book. <laughs> What's your favourite place you've travelled? I have been to a fair number of places. I feel like I've had a lot of really nice holidays. I feel like I feel like the most aesthetically pleasing place that I've been to is Gozo. I got to see where, you know, Daenerys and Drogo, when she starts getting naked and the first episode, you know, the Azure Rock that's now fallen down, which was very sadness, but it was a very pretty place. We also stayed in this villa and it was so cool. It was like a big birthday for my mum and my aunt and uncle and my nan and granddad were there and I think my uncle came up, a different uncle, and it was just really nice to just have like a whole family time. I had to go on this um, car to get anywhere and it was like a van that my dad had got and we all piled into this van and it had like rubbish seat belts and they were like cliff edge roads and we were all like definitely gonna die, definitely gonna die. So uh, that was a fun, 
was a fun holiday. I really enjoyed that. That was a really nice place to go to. I, when I go to places, I tend to just like relax and sort of enjoy like the scenery around me. I don't really go sightseeing that much. So the only really big sightseeing holiday that I've been on was when I went to Northern Ireland with my mum. Um, and we went to Belfast and we did like all of like run around tourism we call it where you just run around and you do all of the touristy things and that was really fun. I'd definitely go back there because we didn't actually manage to see everything and it was really easy to get there. So what book outside your comfort zone were you most surprised you ended up loving? Probably The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovich because that's like found family of misfits who are all kind of assholes but like they're like a unit as well as like a sports team and um yeah, I don't think I thought I was gonna like it, but I was like, yeah, I really like this, this is really good. Uh, so I think I was quite surprised that I liked that one, even though I'd been told by numerous people it was a really good book, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go, but I wasn't really expecting that I would love it, and I did, so. And what's my favourite place to read? Somewhere comfortable. I don't really mind where I'm reading, as long as it's super comfortable. I am comfort over pretty much anything so if I am reading inside I want to be reading on like a sofa or like a bed or somewhere with loads of cushions because I really love cushions yeah so that's where my favorite place to read is probably in my house <laughs> so the starlight system asks would you rather only ever be able to reread your favorite books or be able to read new books but never be able to reread any of your favorites again and like I feel like that's a hard question for a lot of people but for me it's not I'd rather reread my favorite books because I have a lot of favorite books and there is no way that I could stomach not being able to read them again I mean I know I can visualize legend I know that I can remember all of these books but they're my favorite books for a reason and I fucking love them and they're like going home so not being able to reread my favorite books is is like being forced to never return to your family home again and that's just depressing so I just reread my favorite books I think <laughs> R Jensen asks my question is how do you organize your bookshelves and um badly is the answer to be honest I don't really have a total system for organization I think the only consistency in my organization is that I try and keep series together a lot of the books that I have by authors aren't necessarily the same size like a good example is my uh, David Gemmel shelf where I have some hardbacks, I have some that are taller, I have some that are like small format and like it's just a lot to try and keep them all together so I try and keep them all in the same place but if I can't do that then I will try and keep series in the same place. Also when I was first setting out my bookshelves and after I'd reorganized them I was trying to keep sort of my favorite books in like the same sort of places so like this shelf here has a lot of books that I really enjoyed on it and like well this one is mostly books I haven't read yet but think I'm gonna love and then we've got a lot of favorites here and we've got a lot of favorites up there I've tried to keep them all together and I've tried to keep like a lot of random thriller books together because I'm like well they don't really have another place at least they can be together in sort of a thrillery section and then like that shelf over there pretty much just goes out the window yeah some some genres are kept together mostly it's organized by the size of the book and how it will fit on the shelves <laughs> it's just terrible I'm bad at organization Whoa. Choose Yourself 101 asks what are your favourite hobbies besides reading and I feel like I've already answered that one so I'm not going to do it again. And last question, we are on to the last question guys. Diana Gonzalez asks my question is where have you wanted to travel due to reading about it? And I don't really read that many books that are set in this world so I, uh, that's kind of a hard question but if I could pick anywhere in terms of fantasy worlds and our world then I'd really like to go into Lord of the Rings. I feel like I've sort of gushed about Lord of the Rings in this question because it has really impacted me. I feel like Middle Earth is such a fucking fantastic world and like can you imagine going to the Shire and then like being able to walk to Rivendell and Lothlorien and Helm's Deep and so many other places that I just like I mean Helm's Deep wouldn't be that great because it's a fortress and a lot of people died there but like still <laughs> I, would, I would love it it would be so good um i'd love to go on a walking tour of middle earth that would be awesome it would be really cool to be able to go into the red rising world as well um there's definitely you know the whole caste system thing and all the death there's lots of death i would definitely get killed if i was in red rising world <laughs> it just wouldn't happen for me i would definitely die so yeah those are all the questions that you've asked me and i'm gonna have to edit this and it's so much of me rambling that who knows how long this video is going to be. Sorry if it's super long. So the giveaway. This is the thing that you probably all just waded through 
a long time of me talking to get to, <laughs> let's get on to it. So everyone that commented on the video where I asked for questions for this, um, anyone that commented at all, you didn't have to ask me a question, has been put into this cat mug and I'm just gonna completely, like, I'm gonna give it a good switch around so that the people I put in there at the top aren't still at the top and like, everybody is pretty much mixed around and I can't, I feel like it's just a mess of paper in there now. So, okay, so this one, this one. So the winner of my giveaway, £15 book depository, is Penelope the Paperback Cat. So yeah, Penny, I will get in touch with you on Twitter and let you know that you have won the giveaway so that I can get you your books. So that's it from me guys, I hope you didn't mind listening to me ramble about myself for a very long time. <laughs> like, this video is so weird to make, I don't really talk about myself in so much detail that much. Um, thank you so much for asking me questions and subscribing to my channel, being here at all. I, I appreciate it more than I can actually show you with my face and because I'll just get really emotional and uh, it's a whole thing, I can't, I can't do it, I'm so awkward. Um, and the like, I, I just, I'm so bad at sort of displaying that, but it means so much to me and I am so grateful that you guys are here. So if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!